Hello and welcome. In this video I want to show you how you can build your first level with the Uber Radiant, which is the level editor for Star Trek Elite Force 2. There are a few more things you should know before you start to build your own level. I have made several other tutorials. Look at them. You will find them in the playlist. My recommendation is build first the basic layout so you see kind of what the level should be. You can see the size of the level, you can see the way of the level, the design, how it feels, where players might be going, what could be added, what is too big, what is too small, what could be removed. Before you start putting in details and models into the level, I think this is the most important thing to do first, because I've seen many levels where the scale is completely off and everything inside was already built by this bad scale and the mapper has not tried out the map first. Try out the map with running, jumping, crouching, everything. Think about how you would actually explore a level if it would not be your own. Don't create a level being restricted to the way you think it should be played. Rather try to anticipate what players might be doing different than you. Think of it as the opposite what you would do or ask someone else to play your level and see what they think of it. You might learn a great deal and you might add a lot of great improvements from feedback. So go first with some sort of layout. It doesn't matter if it isn't complete and it doesn't matter if you are not all happy with it and it doesn't matter if you need to expand it later because you can and you should, especially in the beginning. Since levels for Star Trek Elite Force 2 are built out of blocks, which are called brushes, I will first create a brush. Now for this I will change first the grid size to 4 by pressing the 4 key on the keyboard. Then I will find some spot in the 2D view. I prefer to work with this view first. Left click, hold it and drag the mouse until I can see a brush appear. Now I will right click and align my camera. The camera should be right on it, but I can't see it. I can see here in this view, I'm above. So I'm holding control and then moving the mouse to move the camera up or down or sideways to see my brush. I go a little bit further back, then I press shift, the right mouse button and move the mouse. This allows me to swivel and home in on my brush. Now this brush is a little bit small. We want something like 512 to 512. So I'm gonna grab the brush from the sides, which allows me to change its size. The number on the bottom here is 424 and I want it to go up to 512. Now I'm gonna push it a little bit in this direction and I do the same for this direction until I reach 512. Now I can move this brush as long as, as, long as it is selected by left clicking on the brush and moving the mouse. To deselect a brush, press Escape. To select a brush, press Shift and the left mouse button. I have about the size I want. And now I'm going to move this thing one grid down, because this is going to become our floor. Then I move it all up until I get about 512 again. There we go. 
then I make sure that I am on the grid 4 by pressing the 4 key and then I click on this nice button which is the hollow button. Don't click the button next to it because it could ruin your map. Go for hollow. Click it and now this brush is empty. So it created basically a simple map for us. These brushes now need some kind of texture. Textures are basically images that are loaded into the game in a format that the game understands and can display efficiently. There are textures with special properties like animated textures, transparent textures, textures that make up the contents like for example water. There are many more examples in which I will go in a later tutorial into detail. Click on the menu, add textures and go on the line that reads forever and click it. These textures are from the Dallas mission. To see the textures the radian loaded press the T key. On the top I have a search bar to quickly search for certain textures. I also have a scroll bar. If you don't have the search bar and the scroll bar in your textures window, look up one of the previous videos in which I explain the configuration of the Uber Radiant. I want some kind of floor texture. F L O O R now if you type slower, entering the O opens the console. You can prevent that by typing faster. If that is not your thing, you can go back by pressing T again to go back to the texture window. Now I want a texture that looks like a floor. I'm going to select this one. Now I want the walls to be different, so I pressed escape to deselect all that I had selected. Now I'm going to select the walls by holding shift and then clicking left on the object I want to select. To rotate the camera I hold down the right mouse button and move the mouse. Now I'm going to select again with shift and left mouse and shift and left mouse for the next object. I want the walls to be in a different texture. Mm. I'm gonna go for this one and I deselect everything I had selected again. Then I close the texture window by pressing T again. Save. And I'm gonna save it as first map there we go. Save. Yep. To access the entity that defines the spawning location of a player, press the N key. Then in this list, select any item by clicking left on it once. Then start typing into your keyboard fairly fast info and it jumps to all the entities that start with info in their name. We need info player start. Now it spawned us a new object somewhere up there but we need it to be on the floor. So I move it down. If you don't have the co-op mod installed, move the spawn locations further away from the walls because the spawn locations in the stock game code 
are displayed incorrectly in size and if you are too close to a wall you might get the player stuck. There are no settings for this object yet applied. You might want the player to be facing into a different direction. Then you can use one of these buttons. If you might not see all the buttons because they are cut off, you can click any button, like for example this one, and the 2D view has updated, while here the 3D view did not. To update the 3D view we press escape and the object has updated. Now this is not the direction we want the player to actually face. Then we try this one and we know how the level editor is actually aligned. 135 was in this direction, 90 is in this direction and 360 is in this direction and 315 is in this direction, 270 is in this direction. I want the player to face kind of in this direction here. So I'm going for 315, but I could also click on the property and edit it myself. Now I deselect the object again and it has updated. Can I change this again to 300? There we go. Deselect the object and it has updated again. This is the single player spawn point. We need a multiplayer spawn point as well. Select the entity and press space. Now you have a clone of the spawn location. It's again a info player start, but we want a info player deathmatch. So we look up in the list, info player deathmatch, and while we have this spawn selected, we double click it on the list. Now we have a spawn location for multiplayer. We're going to change the angle to 360. In this case, it defaults to zero, which is fine. Then we deselect the object. And we can save the map again by pressing Ctrl S. Now, one spawn location for a single player in multiplayer is probably not the best idea. So we are going to repeat the cloning process with this spawn location. Again, make sure you have sufficient distance between each spawn location and the walls. Deselect the currently selected objects by pressing Escape. Then click on the list once with the left mouse button and start typing web. Place a weapon on the level by double clicking it on the list. Now the weapon might not spawn at the location you expect it to. Sometimes it can spawn outside, sometimes it can spawn inside. Depending on what you selected last, you need to scroll out and look it up. And if you don't find it anywhere on the map, just press backspace if you don't find the item. This will remove the item from the map. Then select the closest item to you, which would be one of these. Deselect it. Go on the list again. Type web again. And have the weapon spawn again. Make sure that the bounding box, which is the red box around it, is inside the level. The same goes for the spawn locations. Make sure they are not stuck inside the floor. The level is now basically complete. You can close the entity menu by pressing N again. Then you go on Build Map in the menu and you click on Quick Compile BSP and this. If the console window you are seeing gives you an error, go back to my tutorial how to install and configure the Radiant.
It's the first tutorial in this series. If you can't fix your map, but you still want to try it out, you can try Build Map, Quick Compile, BSP only. Inside the game, we have to open up the console. You need to look up which key is the right key for you or just try a different couple of keys. Usually the console key is one of the odd keys with the strange symbols like some kind of triangle or circle or other strange symbols like a wave or single quotes one of these keys should work for you. For me it's circumflex because I have a German keyboard. I have to also press backspace to delete any input I get from opening the console. Then to load the map you type def map which is spelled out D E V M A P and then spacebar and the name of your map. I named my map first map and I'm gonna type it in now exactly like I saved the map. First map and press enter. Now I am inside the level. There's the weapon and I'm in single player. Gonna pick up the weapon. Everything looks good. If I want now to test this level in multiplayer, I bring up the console again. I press the up arrow. It repeats my text from before. I press the pause one key or the arrow keys to go left. And then I start typing G underscore game type spacebar number one and semicolon and in front of what I was typing is this circumflex symbol again which is always created when I open the console so I go back to the first position and delete that circumflex and then I hit enter and the map is loaded in multiplayer The player spawns in multiplayer with two weapons, a phaser and a battlet. Keep this in mind when creating maps. There are exceptions to this depending on the game type or the type of the level. In single player the player does spawn with no weapons at all. So if you need the player to use a phaser in single player, you need also to place a phaser somewhere in the level. That's it so far. I hope you learned something and this is helpful for you. Bye.